Billy. Buzzy. I thought today was Wednesday. I'm so sorry, but I'm home now. That's okay. What I did was I flipped. Instead of talking to you first, I talked to Frank Delastrito first instead of second. Okay. Now, here's the Shaka Pifi. We've got to do our book Shaka Pifi because we were discussing the movie for tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, which is Utopia. Oh, no. By Abbott and Costello. Right. And your album is Utopia by Buzzy Linhart. This is Utopia, Laurel, Laurel and Hardy? Yeah, Laurel and Hardy. Thank you. Yeah. Laurel and Hardy. Um, Oliver Hardy, who uh, was, I guess, 300 pounds in the movie, got down to 140 pounds, and then died. And then died. Well, it, it saved money on a casket. <laughs> Are we on the air now? We're on the air, and we have an audience. Who's the audience? Oh, uh, believe it or not, it's, it's Louise from three hours north of London. She's visiting her cousin down in uh, San Diego, and they drove up for the afternoon to say hi. Could she do a station ID? This is Louise on visual radio. Oh, yeah. Okay, Vic, this is Louise. What do you want me to say again? This is Louise on visual radio. This is Louise on visual radio. Yeah, listen to See, I'm the visual, you're the radio. They see me, they, they hear you. Okay. Uh, this is Louise on visual radio. All the way from London. Oh, well, no, Southampton in Hampshire, actually. Oh. Yeah, that and, Louise. <laughs> I love your accent. Yeah, thank you. And yours. I'll hey. hand you back to the man. Thank you. Yeah. Buzzy, you have colorful people around you all the time. You have to do a movie. I know. We should. We will. So the Shaka Pifi is Utopia. Well, Utopia is the movie, the last um, movie by last. Oliver Hardy and um, his partner there, <laughs> Laurel, Stan Laurel. And you were the first Utopia. So their Utopia was the last movie, and your Utopia was the first album. That's right, before they were called Utopia. And somehow this TV show had to get that out to the world. That Utopia was the last movie by Albert and Costello and the first record album for the band Utopia, Electric Lady Dream. It's reincarnated. Yeah, it came back to life. And we have uh, 26 minutes, so let's go track by track, Buzzy. What do you open the new album with? Um, you know, we have not completed the, uh, the order, the programming order, so uh, that would be hard to say yet, as of yet. So let's start with Kirkpatrick's uh, defeat. It will not be on the Buzzard version of this album because uh, we want to get it out fast and we don't have permission yet to use that record. And unfortunately, in, in the business, to be totally safe, you, you want to get signatures first or you could wind up in court. Now, isn't there a different um, version on the Moogie? For further notice, Moogie's song can't be on the record. Now, did you and Moogie do another version on the radio? Um, yes, but not, not one that's been released as of yet. That's a very rare tape that I haven't heard myself in years. So wouldn't you, could you put that on Electric Lady Dream? Uh, it would all, uh, Art, I'm Buzz, he's Art, we're Buzz Art. He's the expert in that, and, uh, and he, would feel, uh, he would feel that we wouldn't want to take a chance on, uh, on offending somebody. And right, it, uh, by putting an alternate take. Got it. And uh, the Lieber and Stola track won't be on this either, right? It will not also. And, and we also have to skip the Fred Neal and the Tim Harden song. So uh, to me, it's, <coughs> it's a rather bleak lineup compared to the original. There will be a, uh, uh, a bootleg, I hear, available of the original. And we'll give people uh, details on that in the future. But it can't be... Uh, can't be on my current label, otherwise uh, we could all get hauled into court. Whoa. So this is, um, boy, you know, like um, last week or the week before, uh, I was interviewing a guitar player 
it was last week, and um, Jay Giles' band is touring. And do you know they're touring without Jay Giles? Really? And I'm like, okay. I mean, we kind of broke it here. It was in the Globe, but it hadn't really been on radio or TV yet. And it's like, oops, sorry. I, I had no idea. And the YouTube is kind of like getting a lot of hits now because people want to hear that conversation about Jay Giles not being in the Jay Giles band as they tour. Uh-huh. So he wants the name, I guess, um, and he's got paperwork out there that he believes the name is his, where he's Jay Giles, and the rest of the guys, you know, I used to manage Danny Klein, the uh, bass player. I see. The rest of the guys are out there as Jay Giles band, and they're touring. They've got Duke Levine on guitar, who's very, very good. This, this is something that uh, people should uh, uh, take precautions with in the future and try to make sure that uh, if the band has a following that uh, they can continue to put out records without uh, these side effects. It, it's, it's an ever-changing, ever-evolving world. And, and um, y you know, I don't know, Buzzy, if I like that Foreigner goes out there with a new lead singer that sounds like Lou Graham, and he's supposed to be terrific, and Journey has a singer that sounds like, you know, Steve Perry. Yes. But they're clone bands. If for all intents and purposes, it's a clone band. That's right. It's no different than uh, a local band doing a famous Do, song. A tribute to Buzzy Linhart. Either call it a tribute or have the original members. Yeah. That um, would be strange to have a Buzzy Linhart tour without me on it. Well, the Buzzy Lynn Hot Tribute Band, you know. Um, they do it for Jimi Hendrix. Uh, I'm surprised you haven't done one yet with the Hendrix Estate. They have, uh, you know, Buddy Guy goes out, and they all do Hendrix tunes. I see. Well, I've just never talked to them, and I guess uh, it's something I should try to do in the near future. Yeah, actually, um, that, that is a good idea. We'll have to talk off, off camera about that. That would be a good thing for you. Go on one of those Hendrix tours. Because you were friends with Jimmy and you played with him. Um, that being said, so four tracks won't be on. To go, to let me go if I can meet Buddy Guy. So. Buddy's a wonderful man. I've had lunch with Buddy. I used to produce him back in 86. Uh, a show from, but I didn't get to meet him. Ah. Now, Buzzy, so there's four tracks missing. How many tracks are you putting out? Um, we're going to put out the same amount of tracks, it's nine, but uh, it'll be different songs. We felt we should at least equal the uh, the amount of time, but there'll be uh, some uh, rare and until now uh, unavailable uh, Buzzy Linhart songs, and there'll be a couple, at, at least one with the, the great Maruga Booker and, and Chaos uh, guys, friends of mine, who I did a band with, who uh, recorded with George Clinton. And uh, I'll tell you, those songs are really, really impressive. And the thing that that's uh, making me happy is to see that they do fit uh, the format of my life. Uh, and they fit right in with the stuff that we did in 1971. And I think that's uh, at least shows I have a integrity of some sort <laughs> yeah wow okay so this is all new news since our last conversation which was uh, on the 19th i believe of uh, july yes i didn't get to mention that to you at the time but art and i've decided to to pack it with more songs so electric lady dream will be a totally new release yes it sure will separate from the music album um can you go about over any of the tracks and what you uh, and your thoughts on them? Absolutely. All right, throw a track at us. At, at, at one time, well, we'll, we'll, we'll mention uh, uh, Talk About a Morning because it was uh, Jimmy's favorite song out of all of them uh, at the time of his passing. And uh, Eddie Kramer, the great producer and engineer of, of all of Jimmy's uh, official records uh says that uh, when he came in to uh to rehearse with the tape machines running and start recording for the last album which was eventually called the cry of love uh 
Jimmy would come in and when he was tuning his guitars, uh, would look over at Eddie and say, play that song. And he would play Talk About a Morning up to 10 times in a row, uh, Eddie says. And, uh, and so when anybody came to audition the sound of the studio, because it was a brand new studio owned by Jimi Hendrix and everybody of course wanted to be there, but they still had to hear what it sounded like and uh, they were treated to uh, talk about a morning, seal the deal for uh, a whole series of it, at least 15 albums that came out of Electric Lady Studio Gold. Nice.